We're back. We're back. We're back for another instalment of Mike and Dan Talk Shit about yeah. stuff they don't know anything about, according to some people. Apparently. Um, so yeah, we're done, Mike, from Bison yeah. Savannah. We are back to talk about all things outreach, outreach. today. I uh, hope loads of people are <laughs> uh, watching yeah. and uh, go and tell everybody about it. Share it with every mm. single person. No, not every single person, every single online coach, you know, because yeah. we don't really want to niche down. Niche really. down. Because you know the importance of that now. So um, how to do outreach? Conversations just don't work for me. So how, should we get a VA? I think this is really important to start because I think outreach has become a hot topic. It's become a hot topic. Hot topic. In, in online coaching and all this sort of stuff. Alan, and the way it's done. Bath. Yeah. I was Remember? just thinking like that then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Hot topic. Oh. Um, it's Alan Partridge. Yeah, you go watch it if you haven't. It's yeah. fucking brilliant. Uh, we're showing our age there as well, by the way. We've um, got a listener here <laughs> who fears he might be gay. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> for, to keep him anonymous, we're going to use his first name only. Am I talking to Domingo from Little Wickton? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he seems to have gone. Yeah, he seems to have gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very strange. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a taboo subject, I think, in, in online world and stuff like that. And I think, we, it, I think it's, a, it's a very, it's an ever-changing thing. And I think it's something that is going to change probably even, even from when we put this out to maybe two months down the line. Because I think it's something that evolves rapidly as it involves a lot of different people um, and I'm going to elaborate on this in a sec but we've gone from Instagram being a, a platform where you can post loads of stuff and people are going to find your content and it's done people follow you you can then go okay cool loads of people follow me to now the, the, the algorithms and all that sort of stuff people are talking about doing more cold outreach which is basically you just message random people on Instagram and say hey hope you're good like I'm an online coach um, just found your profile you look great whatever, all that sort of crap, right? And I don't know how many of you guys, well, I do know how many of you guys are online coaches, but you probably get so many cold DMs of people being like, hey, I can go you Instagram, follow in, you know? And it's now, it, it's now literally goes into hidden requests because Instagram have realized people don't fucking want to hear from, hear from these people, right? So I think Instagram are cutting onto it. Like Instagram have kind of said, look, direct messaging, DMing is going to be a big part of Instagram going forward. And all the business mentors have cotton onto this and gone, oh, well, that means we should just send cold DMs to every single person that possible on the internet. Send 200 a day, 300 a day, you know, whatever. Play the numbers game with it and see if people need your help. So what they tell you to do is go and follow, like, you know, your Weight Watchers, your big accounts and your James Smith maybe and just to go into the followers and literally send a message to them and be like, hey, I'm an online coach. And as it turns this. out, you're Mike Bicep Spanner and Dan Bicep Spanner. Well, apparently, from what we're hearing now as well, oh. like, you know, um, what was it, Your one of your... I said this today, so my... My mum's joined Instagram, of course she has. Um, follows me now. Um, follow, my mum is now followed by an online coach. <laughs> Get You know which one it is. It's the same one. As, yeah. yeah, yeah. Followed by an online coach. And it just makes me laugh because I'm like, well, she doesn't need your help, mate. Um, number one. But again, also another another person who's in mentoring, also an online coach with, you know, crazy. But anyway, a lot of my clients have the same thing. So I'll have a client who's just a normal fat loss client and I'll go onto their go onto their profile every so often and um, or they'll message me and go, oh, this guy's followed me and he sent me this message. What's this about? And I'm like, don't worry about it, just ignore him. Um, it's funny how it's always the same sort of people, isn't it? They do mm. this sort of thing. Um, but there's this, there's, so anyway, so I digress. But anyway, with Instagram, basically what mentors are basically telling you to do is to go and follow loads of random accounts. Follow some, so, you know, so go to James Smith's followers, 1. Million, 1 million followers that he's got. You just go and follow these people, right? So you follow them in the hope they might follow you back or you send them a message or you interact with their account, whatever it is. Uh, and it's just, it's just spammy, right? Just basically spammy, just a numbers game. See, send people you can follow and, and message and hope for the best. It's a shit tactic, right? Because how many people do you have follow you, right? I, I get it regularly. Someone will follow me and it says... Um, FX trader, something like that, or it'll be like copywriter, or it'll be Instagram growth expert, followed you, like seven of your things, then sends you a message. How many people are doing it, right? Loads. How many of those messages do you reply to and go, yeah, I'd love to work with you? I'm no. guessing none. Same as me, none. But yeah, there's business mentors out there suggesting that online coaches do it to people who need fat loss advice, who need fat loss help. Go and send these messages to these people. Follow them, like their stuff. They'll notice you. They'll come to your page. Well, not if your niche is not set up properly. Not if your Instagram bio is not set up properly. But anyway, that's another that's another video. Go watch that one. Um, so they're recommending that they, they do outreach. And I think it's going to kill it for a lot of people because we're already getting people say to us, why are we getting so many people message us this stuff? Like fat loss clients. We're getting people message us going, why, why am I getting this message from this client? People are cottoning onto it very, very quickly. And I can't stress that enough. That shows how people are doing it. I get a lot of my clients and they've, they've cottoned onto it. 
they've sort of they've noticed a real tide is turning where people are getting a lot of random cold DMs in Instagram and they fucking hate it. Yep. And it's because there's so many people within, well, coaches within mentorship that have been told. And it's not, by the way, that's not just coaching and mentorships. That is literally just people are just spamming shit. Yeah, yeah. Clothes is one. Really? Forex trading, Forex, all this yeah. sort of stuff. Grow your follow, Instagram followers. Yeah, they're yeah. the ones that like, have got yeah. a lot of people get sent them. And it's all since kind of Instagram have mentioned about DMing is going to be the, the, the way that people are connected. It's, um, yeah. And it's, it's one of those things where people are now receiving because you're all looking in the same places. So you're probably all contacting the same people. So imagine you're said people and you're receiving three or four messages from online coaches each week saying, oh, I think, you know, how about online coaching? Have you ever thought about online coaching? Bit weird. Like, bit weird, isn't it? Um, so that's not how we would go about doing outreach. And I would assume that you've found us because you have got similar values and things. I assume that you've either A, done that and it, it's just felt like arduous and spammy and things like that. Or B, um, it, it, ju- it, it just would never agree with you. And like like we said, this is this channel is about t- talking about what we've done. Now we've never we've never been like that. We hired a VA for one month um, to kind of test the waters, try it out. Literally paid her for one month, and that's it. Did we see any benefit of that um, in terms of growth or um, D- DMs being successful? No, because what you're doing is pretty much the exact opposite of what you need to do as a coach. You're dragging in any Tom, Dick or Harry. Let's just say if you do two, in fact, one of my clients was told to do 200 messages per week, right? Uh, 200 messages per day a week. Um, So 1400. And he said in his first week, he got in seven clients. He said, but by month two, they'd all dropped off. Does that sound like a sustainable business model to you? No, because you're consistently going to go through this churn of, yes, the numbers game, like Dan said, it's a numbers game, but I wouldn't want to run my business on a numbers game on 1,400 messages per week, like to get seven people in, seven of the wrong people who are going to take up a coaching space and you're not going to get them a result because they don't know you from Adam to begin with. You've just found the seven people out of that 1,400 that would give it a pun or whatever, which is not a good thing, by the way. You're then going to not get a result. They're going to drop off. You're going to feel poor about your own coaching uh, practice. You've filled up a space with someone who never got you a result or referral or anything like that. So you're going and looking at the wrong people and you're just and they're just they're just spamming and they're spamming. So we never built our business by doing that. Never. Instead, what we've done throughout the years is that we've probably been quite reg like quite regular engagers with our audience. We've had the same. You you recognise the same names and you chat to them and you build relationships. And we were doing it by 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 pot look well by being a normal human i think by just engaging with people and chatting to people and there's people that we know their names of and you you probably know stuff about their life without without actually having having met them like and they've been long term followers and we were doing that before before it became sexy i think, I think the, so the so the reason that it worked and and thinking back and sort of reverse engineering it is because again a lot of our content is opinionation mm-hmm. it's <laughs> opinionated and it is that's not even a word really? opinion, opinionation um, it's opinionated so people will likely then respond to it because they want to give their opinion everyone likes to give their opinion about stuff right and by by that very nature our Instagram stories our Instagram posts were very opinionated so people want to give you their opinion and they either like it or loathe it and they tell you that and they, they start a conversation with those people so we were doing conversations before they were even a thing right yeah. we were being conversational and yeah. it's just that thing of you've got to be a human being and and this is where people struggle with social media is the social aspect of it. A lot of coaches want to just post something online and then run away and never, never work. And they, they're sitting there expecting someone just to come into their DMs going, hey, how much is coaching? <laughs> and it's kind of like most coaching and most people that come in f- to us and maybe for our clients, if you go on our Instagram, I can find you the message where they've said, how much is one-to-one coaching or how do I start with as a client? And if you flick back, you'd be able to flick back a good 10, 15, 20 messages easily. For most people, on average, some longer, some shorter, obviously. But the point is, it it's never the first touch point is from us as well. By the way, is just going to be right. Do you want coaching? 
Yeah. It's not the first touch point. And it's, and it's never going to, in my opinion, it's never going to work long term. Like you said, it's just not a sustainable business. No. You can play the numbers game all you want. You get a VA all you want, but it's like, how long is that going to work for? And how long are you going to be sat there flying by the seat of your pants, worrying that it's not going to, or until it, until it dies on its ties of death? So how we go about outreach and how we would tell people to do it. I wouldn't even call it outreach. outreach. I just call it, it's just conversation. Being, it's just being a human being. So on social media, you have to be social. So there is that. If you're going to be an online coach, you've got to be online. So you've got to be social. So we see a lot of a lot of coaches who just do not chat enough to their audience. And you'll get the, oh, I've messaged everybody. We haven't messaged everybody. I don't think, I don't think you've messaged everybody. But also my analogy is, imagine there's 100 people at a party and you say, hey, you know, how are you doing? Oh, nice to meet you. To all 100. And then in this analogy, you're basically going, oh, I've spoke to everybody now. I'll go home. Well, no, you would go and speak to them again, mm-hmm. build, form relationships with the ones that you do like. Like, that's, that's what you would do, and that's what social media is. And the way that mentors are going about this outreach, in my opinion, is wrong. So the way that we frame it is see your following as the gym. Now, I, f- I frame it as this because you know that people are in the gym – so they're interested in getting fitter or stronger or healthier or other, right? They're in your vicinity, local, distance, and there's a, probably a good chance that they might require some coaching. Probably a greater chance than an average Joe off the street, right? So we see that as our social media, is that if they followed us because of our content, because of our niche, because of what we do, um, it's going to be unlikely that they, somebody would follow us for the for the wrong reasons because of the content that we put out, then that's the equivalent to our gym, right? So we go and talk to people in the gym, essentially. Now, what mentors are teaching you to do is to go outside of that gym and go on the street and just say, do you want coaching? Do you want coaching? Do you want coaching? Do you want coaching to anybody? And the odd person will say yes, but that's not the way to be doing it. So we frame it the same as, okay, we'll go back into the gym and the members that are in there, say hello to them, help them, um, with a little bit of form, offer them a spot, ask them how the training's going, build relationships, like know a little bit about their life. And what do you think, again, I, I talk in binaries a lot, do you think that is more or less likely to get you a client if you act that way, more likely? So do that then. Mm-hmm. So that's all you're doing on social media. The followers that you have, chat to them, be sociable, like engage with them, respond to their stories, laugh, clap. When they laugh at yours, Send them a message back. Don't hit double tap and just like send them a message. Say, yeah, mental, isn't it? If they like a reel or like a post. Hey, I did this yesterday. I posted a, I posted a, I don't know if it was a reel or a post or something yesterday. Uh, and I said, um, thank you for the, uh, for the like on the last post, mate. Mental, isn't it? And I sent that to maybe five or six people. There's nothing wrong in that. That's just me being conversational. Just the same as you would say hello to six people. It's okay to say the same thing to similar people, right? Uh- I think with that as well, like think of it in other contexts and other areas and, and fitness is no different to other other things, right? So a lot of people who are head in business, do well in business, they all, often say it's all about networking. It's all about who you know. It's all about those connections you make people like people give other people business if they know them and all this sort of stuff, you know, it's like that way of thinking is very, very big in businesses is that someone, you, you know, you'll always come from recommendation from someone and you go, okay, oh yeah, I know someone who's really good at that and you, that's how you build a network of people, right? And like Mike said there about the party example, it's kind of like with 100 your people. Your network right? is your net worth. Oh, is that what they say, is it? <laughs> um, so if you've got that, the 100 people in that party, you're effectively, like Mike said, you're going around, you're saying hello to everyone, all that sort of stuff, and you're not going to connect with all of them. There might be 20 of them that you connect with, right? But the point is, you don't go into that, into that party and go, I'm an online coach, I can help anyone in here with any sort of nutrition advice you need whatsoever, just come over to me and say hello. People are going to be looking around going, who the fuck's that weirdo? It's even easier like, online because they know you're an online coach. Well, yeah, because they know that. Because right? it's in your fucking bio and in your but, content, you clown. But the thing is, is that people are going into that room and, and they're just kind of like blurting it out rather than getting to know these people. And as you know with like networking, is a lot of the networking happens, right, in social events. A lot of networking happens over drinks, over meals, golf, things like that. It's very rarely that first occasion you meet someone, they're going to buy from you. They're going to buy off you. Whether it, again, I'm talking pure business stuff here. People know when they go to these events because they know that so-and-so is going, I've met so-and-so before. I'm going to work with them in the future. I really want to make, get, their, get their contract, their business. So they go out their way to spend time with them socially to then get their business, right? And it's kind of the same thing. And it's not always going to pay off. But 
you need to make sure that you do the social bit first. You need to take the person for a drink. You need to get hammered with them. You need to go out for a meal with them. Like all those things, right? So you need to give them an opportunity to show them your life a little bit and be opinionated like we're talking about because you'll click with certain people more than others. But a lot of you aren't giving people that chance. You're just going in with John coaching. And people can, John coaching. And people can smell bullshit or sales from a mile off. Like, and it's disingenuous. Be genuine. And the way that I frame it to people is stop thinking about the sale today. You're doing com- you're doing conversations and outreach. And I've I've heard before, I'm not getting anything back. What, well, what are you expecting back is my answer yeah. to reply to that. Because like, well, there's no you, expectation. Yeah, back. there's no expectation. It's a conversation. Yeah, it's, a com- yeah. it's yeah. literally yeah. be sociable with people. Instagram will reward you and yeah. you will also build relationships with people. And they're more likely, more likely to buy from you. And again, in that thing, the binary thing that I talk about, if you go, okay, if you think that each person isn't just following you as an online coach, let's say they're following 10. And let's say they've spoke to three out of that 10. Who are they going to go with when they want an online coach? One of the three that they've spoke to or one of the seven that they haven't? Well, it'd be one of the three that I've spoke to. So you need to be one of the three that I've spoke to. And you're not pushy. You're not salesy. You don't need to steer it into a call. You just talk to people. And people know you're in fitness by your profile and the content that you put out. You yep. don't need to You don't need to force it down their fucking throat. You can get into trouble for that, I've been told. <laughs> um, like, So it's disingenuous. So what I tell people is stop thinking about the sale today and thinking about I'm not getting anything back don't expect anything back. Expect that in a month, two months, six months, 12 months, that that person or that relationship could blossom into a coaching relationship. Like, you need to stop thinking about what you're doing today for, for the you of today. Think about what you're doing today for the you of six months' time. Same as if you're dieting. If I started a diet now, which arguably I should... Um, I wouldn't be dieting for the mic of tomorrow, would I? I? I wouldn't be expecting anything back. I wouldn't be like, what? I'm still fat. Like, I would be dieting for the mic in four months after accumulation of time, and I've done the same things, repetition, and in four months, that's when me in four months will thank the me of now for starting now. It's no less difficult. You would still have to cut out crap, um, do your steps, do your cardio, track your food, hit your protein. It's no less difficult at the beginning as it is there. It's the same thing. You're doing the same thing. You're just not lean yet. It's the same thing. So with conversations, it's like do that, build up that relationship, and it will come to fruition in the end. And like you said there, it's not even the expectation thing is really important because there's no guarantees in any of this. So it's always more likely. It's always that they are going to be more likely. That's mm-hmm. all you can ever hope for. Mm-hmm. Even if you have the best conversations in the world, there's no guarantee. This is more likely. And I think that, that like you say, it's just, it's just put, uh, I suppose, um, stacking the chips in your favour. It's just making sure that you're doing what you can be and you're putting yourself out there and you're being opinionated. And get it a lot from coaches. I just don't like social media. I just don't like doing it. It's like, well, then just quit because much like in any other job in any other industry at that high level, you have to have these conversations. You have to be that person. You have to be looking at expanding that network and, and being sociable and, and often, like I said, the people that do the best in those sorts of jobs and that sort of stuff are people who are just more sociable. Um, there's a reason that that's the case and I think that more people need to see it that way. They need to see it as a way of expressing their opinions, expressing their personality more um, and allowing more people to see it and you're going to have more conversations that may lead to more people signing up for coaching if you're providing social proof or that sort of stuff. Like you said, they, these people know what you do. If they're following you and they're interacting with your stuff, they know because they've seen your transformations, they've seen your stories, they've seen your results. So think of it that way. Think, think of it that, that, that you know, you're just being more of a social human being and they're more likely then to know more people and to help more people. Think on a longer timeline as well. Don't think short-sighted like the why am I not leaning in three days. You say that again like to your clients. You think on a longer timeline because you need to think on a longer timeline. You need to stop because there is no guarantees like Dan just said. I had a client sign up with me two days, two days ago. It came from another mentor who promised him guaranteed 20 calls per month. He didn't get 20 calls per month, obviously, because you can't guarantee it. Um, but yet people are offering these things, guarantee this, guarantee that. There is no guarantee yeah. on anything. I can't sit here and say, well, this is how you get five clients. I'll no, no. never guarantee it. You, you, you can't, can't. You can't. You can't guarantee it. No one can. Not a single mentor. No, no one can guarantee anything. All you are doing is stacking the odds in your favor and those decisions, each of those decisions. Am I more or less likely 
to get clients if I've spoke to 20 people this week or none? Well, 20. Okay, so 20 or 40. Well, 40. I'm more likely, aren't you? Like that's a decision that you've got to that you've got to think about. You don't do it for one day and go, "Oh, well that doesn't work." No, you you are just stacking the likelihood up every day and go, "Okay, well 40 40 conversations is more likely than 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 one conversation to get me clients. So do the 40 and keep doing it and keep stacking the odds in your favor. And if seven posts is more likely to get your client than one post, post seven. Do the things that are more likely and you will get results more likely. Mm-hmm. I think with that as well, just to, to finish on this, is that most of the conversations that we have with people, I would argue do not center around fitness. No. Um, like, don't think that you're going to get someone message you after a transformation and be like, oh, that's great. And you're going to start a conversation with that. It's more likely you're going to have a conversation by posting an opinion about a fizzy drink on your stories or eggs, eggs or something like that. Like, again, this is where people get this bit wrong is that they don't post enough of their personal life, of their opinionated stuff, of stuff that they care about, they're passionate about, all that sort of stuff. That they don't get those those people messaging because they're just posting vanilla content all the time. So that's half of the battle. One of your clients the other day posted about Love Island, and I never usually reply to his stories because it's always about fitness stuff. And I replied to that one because I felt compelled to tell him that he sounded like an absolute moron talking about Love Island. And that's how our conversation started. So I was like, well, imagine how many other people thinking the same thing about me. If I was to post about Love Island being shit, I'd probably get abuse because people apparently love Love Do Island it. for some reason. Do um, it. But it's that thing of like, I, I think it's important that you know that. That you know that these conversations don't, aren't based around bench press or carbs or yeah. anything like that. They're based around everyday life things that people have an opinion on and they care a bit more deeply about on a level where they have they want their opinion heard. Um, and, and that's why you need to be posting more of that content, which is why you never get someone get opinionated about protein swaps. They don't care. Whereas if you post something that's really deep and controversial, you're going to get an opinion and people are going to comment about it. So we actually did this at, um, when we, we did a, we did a oh, seminar. Oh, so bad for that guy. We did a, we did a really. seminar, right? Didn't for, really. Uh, for Christopher Bailey, uh, for, for Fit Pros. And um, there was a guy there who was like a, a, was he an expert? I think he was saying he was an expert or... Content expert or something Content like expert that, he? or whatever. And he said, um, he said, you need to do like polls of, um, you know, are you interested in fat loss or muscle gain and things like that? And then he was like, and then you message those people and you say, oh, hey, if you're interested in this, here's a free thing for yeah. it or something like that. Free guide, Which, yeah. again, this is not the worst advice it's, in the world. It's not the worst advice. No, no, it's not the worst advice in the world, but he did it and he, um, and he, so he did that and we were on after him, weren't we? I did it. No, remember, I did it on mine oh, and you right. did. No, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you did, you did it on yours because he didn't, he say to you, he said, oh, did he yeah, say Yeah, it was something it? like, yeah, I'm sure it was him or we decided, well, that's wrong. I think we took it upon ourselves, but yeah. I I posted about something like, "Do you want to hear more about muscle gain or fat loss?" Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then our theory was, if you post something that divides opinion, you're going to get more engagement. And if you're talking about pure chat of then who you can build a relationship up with, we posted what was it? So I posted to so that morning. We had McDonald's breakfast, yeah. and I had I don't even know what it was. I I think I, I think we just I had a sausage muffin. You had a bacon, something like that. I didn't. No, you had an egg. You had a plain egg. Correct. Plain egg one. And but we I had said, to lie, didn't we? And I said, which is better, sausage or bacon? Yeah. Um, and because even though you didn't have it, you were like, well, bacon's better or whatever. I don't eat pork. So we just said, look, we just put up the poll and said, right, I bet. And we said in our seminar, we said, look, this is why we think this works is because more people care about that sort of thing because they want to give their opinion on something like that. So we posted it. And I think um, I posted it on mine. I've got less followers than Mike as well. Yeah. Always have had. A bit annoying. Um, <laughs> really annoying actually um, <laughs> so basically it really, really concerned me there you can tell it really got to me um, you and like, I were pondering yeah, life for yeah, a I was second like, why am I doing this um, not by that many admittedly but, um, but I put the poll and it was like um, and I think at the time I think we had 200 votes on mine yeah. I think you had about 14 yeah it was 14 or something like that and our whole thing was saying look these are people now that you can then start conversations with and go well this is crazy this is mental you can call those people out a little bit more but again it's and it's not even that someone's going to unfollow me because I think sausage a bit than bacon. It's not like that. It's that people are engaging with your content and they, they, they like the fact that you're giving everyday advice, everyday chat, and everyday things that you're talking about. And it was kind of like, we were, that's I the know, whole point of our I thing. know Dan didn't do this, but here's what he could have done if he was looking to build more relationships at the time. He could have met, oh, excuse me. I don't know. Excuse yeah, me. Like it, yeah. Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. You know, don't be in my face. All right. Um, 
He could have gone and messaged everybody that picked bacon and gone, fuck off, you prefer bacon over sausage. Could have said that to, to yeah. all of them, right? Yeah. And then they would have come back or some of them would have come back and he could have started a conversation. And everybody that chose sausage gone, oh, you're a sausage man like me. Yeah. Like something joke. again, funny yeah. joke, you know, because he does love the sausage. Um, that's great. Yeah, he loves it. Can't get enough of it. No way. So that's what he could have done. Whereas me with my 14, I could have gone, well, do you want an ebook on fat loss or an ebook on muscle gain? And yeah, yet three of them might have clicked through to the and, ebook. And, and I and I reckon as well, out of those fourteen, if let's say you get four, would have clicked on the ebook. I re- I would hands down reckon that in a week's time, I'd have got four of those people signed up to the ebook. Yeah, hundred percent. More, do you know what I mean? more, from, more. You would yeah. from that, and it, it's just that thing of you know start engaging with people on that level. And think about, I would say this as well. Think about what you engage with on social media. Think about what you absorb and you watch and you learn and you do all those sorts of things because I can guarantee you now the people that put out more personality are people that you align with more and you follow them more and you watch out for the stories a little bit more you like seeing what they're up to more um, and that's the real key thing with it is it's understanding that people want to align with people who have their opinions like that um, and you can really actually have loads more conversations with people that will lead to sales in the future by having that strategy rather than focusing purely on your job and what you do and just ha- just hammering people with it. It's so like, it's almost like... I can't believe this is advice. It's almost like, uh, Yeah, like, I can't the, believe it's like, advice. Should I post about fat loss and then like, I'm going to start a conversation about fat loss? It's almost like too short-sighted. It's like, uh, yeah. need to have a conversation so it has to be about that. It's like, well, no. What about thinking outside the box and just talking about normal stuff like normal people yeah. and just letting the fact that you, people know you're an online coach do the job? Like, it's it's madness. It's it's madness. There you go. But apparently no one's teaching that. Like, so like, you, like you said, you wouldn't go into a party and go up to someone and go, hi, I'm an online coach. Do you want coaching? But if you went in and we were just like, oh, you're right. Yeah, how are you? You know, what do you do? Oh, you know, I do a little bit of this. Oh, right, really? You know, like... You know, what does that look like? Oh, okay. You, you, and you would have some back and forth. You wouldn't go straight in and just go, coach me then, bitch. And, and, but, and like I said, it, it doesn't even apply to coaching. It's any job. It's any profession. It's anything like that with networking. Is it, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen where it's like the first conversation is, boom, we're in. It doesn't happen like that. We thought so this was going to be a short one, didn't we? It's a long one, isn't it? Sorry about that. What, she's never said that. It's no. Long one. no. Definitely <laughs> yeah. not. I was going to say that's what she said, but she hasn't. So. No, never. We'll leave it there. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like it and that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Always like it. We're good at we good we're good at that. We're good at plugging stuff, aren't we? Yeah. Like it if you if you want. Share it with another online coach. If you want, if you want. Join our our group for forty nine quid if you want. Bargain. Cast me. Bargain hunt. Done.